Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold to Hope. This is part five of a series entitled Church Under Attack. This video is entitled The Alien Agenda. As I have been saying from our first video on up until now, that the Church of Jesus Christ from the time of Jesus and the inception of the Church, we have been under constant attack by those who hate us, those who hate Jesus, who, those who hate the Father. They have tried to prove God a myth. They, have, they keep on stomping and stomping, but stomp as they may, they cannot stomp out the church because we have a promise by Jesus himself says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. So in this video, we're going to deal with aliens and mythical creatures. Turn with me please to Psalms 14 verse 1. The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. So, what is the need for evolution and an ever-expanding infinite universe filled up with millions of galaxies and maybe even billions of planets other than to disprove the existence of God? Is there, if there is nothing above us except for sky, as John Lennon alleged in his song, Imagine, then there is no place for God, no place for a creator, no place for intelligent design. And that's why scientists and professors are not allowed to believe in creation. They are not allowed to believe in the existence of God. They, they just might teach truth, and the truth just might set their students free. So they're either fired, those people who believe in God or who believe in creation, who believe in intelligent design, they're either fired, let go, or defunded. All for believing that there is a God who created everything that you see and everything that you do not see. Everything that exists, God has created it. We can't have truth propagated in our schools now, can we? How could something begin as a theory? This always gets me. How can something as a theory, or, or something that begins as a theory, wind up being an irrefutable proven fact? And not one shred of evidence has been added not one shred of scientific proof has been added. Yet evolution is hailed as a scientific fact. And if anyone, no matter how intelligent that, that person might be, if they claim that there just might be a creator because everything points to intelligent design when stacked up against the scientific method, then they're deemed to be kooks. They're deemed to be stupid and ignorant. Yet, this atheistic God-hating garbage of evolution is written as facts in our textbooks and taught in our schools and in our colleges and in our universities as facts. Could it be that they are rewriting history with these so-called scientific evidence facts in order to create a new religion. One based on science, as we indicated in our last video. Well, inquiring minds want to know. The belief in extraterrestrials, also known as aliens, has become mainstream in our society today. So much so that we have celebrities walking around offended on their behalf because they're called aliens which she believes is a derogatory term and that's why we don't get more visitations from these extraterrestrials wouldn't you know it it's because they're offended so people please do not refer to them as aliens they don't like it not only that but when asked if she would date an alien, she declared, I'm so tired of humans, bring me an alien. It went from being
being absolutely absurd to believe in ETs, to being absolutely absurd and close-minded not to believe in ETs. In fact, you are now a narcissist if you believe that only Earth has life forms and that we are the center of God's creation. I wonder, could it be that they're preparing us for some big happening in the future under the guise of aliens? The way it works, you see, is create a diversion. And while all eyes are diverted, slip in the things that you have planned. The people are too distracted to notice. So this now begs the question, are aliens, or oh, excuse me, are extraterrestrials real? Let us start by visiting the Roswell incident. One of the most famous and probably, or it is one of the first and probably the most famous supposedly alien cover-ups. But don't let me persuade you. I want you to judge. You listen and you decide for yourself. Now, apparently in 1947, the United States Army Air Forces claimed that they had recovered the remains of a flying saucer on a ranch near Roswell, New Mexico. The public information officer at Roswell Army Air Force Base in, in, in Roswell, his name was First Lieutenant Hunt, released a statement under the direction of his superior officer, Colonel Blanchard, and he was instructed to make this release post haze. It was in the effect that they had in their possession the remains of a flying saucer. Five hours later, they released another report contradicting the first one. They claimed that it was not a flying saucer after all, but rather it was a weather balloon. The, the military now has about four or five different official statements out there. Here are, are some other things I want us to consider. One, first of all, the Army would not release that kind of information post haste so flippantly if they indeed wanted to keep such information a secret information that they had alien spaceship in their possession or the remains thereof the other thing is if they had alien technology would they not have reverse engineered the technology and replicated it by now but instead we went to the moon with less technology than we have in our cell phones and passed right through the Van Allen radiation belt with no problem. One of the astronauts claimed that they were able to pass through this belt because at the time they did not know about it and therefore it did not affect them. Now, does that make sense? Now, today, armed with this new knowledge, the knowledge of the Van Allen radiation belt and way, way better technology than they had in, in the 60s, NASA claims that they have to, to solve the problem of passing through this Van Allen radiation belt before they can send a man through on Orion. Just some things that just do not add up. They just don't add up. Secondly, if they really wanted to cover up the first story, they would have made it a little bit more believable than a weather balloon crash because the two are like night and day in contrast. I mean, think about it. If they had a weather balloon testing the atmosphere, would they not have, have been monitoring it? And would they not have known when it crashed? Would they not have known where it crashed? Third, what better way to start a controversy than exactly what happened with the whole scripted Roswell incident. Instead of squashing the alien spaceship crash rumors, the new story was the right recipe to create rumors and controversy about aliens without having to show one bit, one shred, no type of evidence whatsoever, and the rumors would be spread like wildfire. Number four. If it was indeed a crash flying, uh, flying saucer, 
Why did their alien friends, their comrades, their, their fellow aliens not return for the remains? Either the dead bodies or come, come back to see if they were alive or, or even to clean the ship itself. But instead, we hear the sound of crickets. Nothing at all. Number five. Why have the aliens not revealed themselves to the whole world in more than the 70 years that have passed now? Number six, if it was the earthlings who, who discovered them, the aliens, would we not have revealed ourselves to them? I'm sure we would have. Number seven, after all of this time, we are still having or, or receiving sketchy information, blurred videos, and in Possible to prove facts. Number eight, and seriously, do you really believe that for thousands of years aliens have visited and kept themselves hidden, kept themselves secret? But to what, to what purpose? Let me remind you that God said nothing about aliens in his scripture. He does, however, mention angels, heavenly beings, demons, evil spirits, and even ghosts are mentioned in the Bible. I mean, matter of fact, one could even argue for mythological creatures such as satyrs, fawns, pan, krampus. These all are, are depicted as men with horns and legs of goats. And that's mentioned in the Bible. So one could argue for that. Matter of fact, one could even argue for the lily too. Lily too is a mythical woman with bird legs and sometimes wings. It is sometimes translated in the Bible as the night owl or the night hag, or sometimes it's translated as lily too, depending on what version of the Bible and the translator's preference. But about aliens, the Bible is completely silent. Aliens are described as short, gray alien people with large, black, almond-shaped eyes. They look exactly like Alistair Crowley described in his Book of the Law. Now, Crowley, if you don't know, was a magician, a Satanist. And he, he was kicked out of Italy and shunned in his homeland of, of England for being what they deemed as the most wickedest man in the world. So could aliens then be some type of demon or some, some spiritual being or, or some evil spirit? Apparently, there are those who claimed to have been visited by aliens, and when they called on the name of Jesus, the aliens went away. But you decide. You consider all the evidence, and then you yourself be persuaded in your own mind. So, let me just summarize the whole thing. Scientists have moved evolution from a theory to actual facts without one shred of evidence added. They have relegated creation to less than a myth, again, without one shred of evidence to disprove it. But the fact still remains that if the scientific method is to be the standard, then intelligent design must and should um, reign supreme. Aliens are not mentioned in the Bible at all, not even a hint, while mythical beings, on the other hand, can be argued for. But, as usual, each person needs to be convinced in his or her own mind. But do not be tripped up or blindsided by lies, by deceptions, and by falsehoods. The Bible is clear. Humans are the pinnacle of God's creation. You are not insignificant. In fact, you are loved by a loving and gracious God. You are the apple of His eye. Otherwise, He would not have died for you. And I want you to listen to this. One day, He's coming back to get us, those who love Him and who are waiting for His return. He will take us to live with Him in a total peace, a place of peace and harmony, a place of blissfulness, and you you will be there with him if you are waiting for his return. So get ready, for his return is at the door. Thank you so much for joining me in this fifth video in our series, Church Under Attack. I'm Kenny Yates, and this is Hold the Hope. Be blessed. 
and stay blessed.